have you all here with us, both in person and online. All right, so we're thankful for grandbabies and New Year's and birthdays and all kinds of things that we have celebrated. That is wonderful. All right, we'll now have a prelude for Mary. Join with me in our opening prayer. All glorious God, we have faith in Jesus Christ and love towards your people. Yet we are not without blemish in your sight. We are not full of love, wisdom, and other spiritual blessings you still have available for us. Our love is not as inclusive as yours. And there is much we need to learn. Give us clear vision of all that we are meant to do, so that by becoming fulfilled, we may increase the glory that is properly revealed in Jesus Christ, your beloved. Amen. 
friends, hear the good news. The Liberator has come to free us from all proud pretenses. The Christ has come in Jesus of Nazareth to show us the undeserved favor of God. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. morning is from the first chapter of John, beginning with the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the world Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified about him, crying out, this is the one of whom I said, He who comes after me is greater than me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son, who is at the Father's side, has made God known. The word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. Navigating mask plus glasses is an adventure I don't yeah. wish on anyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Megan Woods, and I am really excited to be here with you today. I am, among many other things, an almost lifelong Alaskan and, as Pastor Christina said, a third-year seminary student working on becoming a pastor in the United Methodist Church. Early on in my discernment process, I had the privilege of meeting with Pastor Christina as my clergy mentor, which is how part of how I came to be here with you all in Willow today. So I'm taking this moment at the beginning of my sermon to say thank you to Pastor Christina and all of you here in person or online for allowing me to join you today. I'm really excited to be here on this second Sunday in the Christmas season and the first Sunday of a new year. Will you join with me in a moment of prayer? Open my lips, O Lord, that I may sing your praise. May the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O most holy God. Amen. There is no doubt that Marley was dead. This must distinctly be understood, or nothing wonderful can come of the story I am going to relate. So begins probably my favorite Christmas story, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. This line for me really sets the tone for the rest of the book. Dickens repeats several times that Jacob Marley longtime business partner of Ebenezer Scrooge is dead. Six times in the opening four paragraphs to be precise. I counted. <laughs> but the fact that Marley 
is dead is really important for the rest of the story. Because if Jacob Marley is not dead, then Scrooge's visits with the ghost of Jacob Marley, with the ghost of Christmas past, Christmas present, and Christmas future can all be written off as a hallucination or a really, really involved practical joke. But no, Marley is dead. And as a consequence, we, the readers, have to seriously confront the impact of these ghosts on Scrooge's life. Scrooge begins the story as a miserable man who dealt with his misery by making other people miserable. His visit with these ghosts, however, change him. He becomes a kind friend to all he meets. He becomes generous. He stops shutting himself away from the world. But in order for the story to have any kind of meaningful impact, we need first and foremost to know that Jacob Marley is, as Dickens puts it, as dead as a doornail. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Just like Charles Dickens starts off his story with the unequivocal declaration that Jacob Marley is dead, the writer of the Gospel of John begins his story with the passage we read today. This passage is sometimes called the prologue to the Gospel of John, and is more than likely an ancient Christian hymn. John used this hymn to tell us what he considers essential for us to know, for the rest of the story to make any kind of sense. The prologue tells us at least three things that for John, we need to know for the story of Jesus to make sense. First, the Son of God was there at the beginning of creation, in no uncertain terms. The Son of God was not only there, the Son of God was involved in creation. The Son created everything, the trees, the snow that caused the whiteout on my way in, and us. The Son knew us long before the events of Christmas took place. In order for the gospel to make any sense or have any impact on our lives, we need to know that we were known from the beginning. We need to know that we were known. The Son of God who came down at Christmas is someone who has a relationship with us that goes back. Secondly, we need to understand that the world does not always recognize the Son of God. Verse 10 says, The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. Throughout the Gospel of John, people encounter Jesus and either see and believe or see and reject the world does not always recognize the light. And I know for myself, there are times I don't recognize the light either. I'm struck by this word, recognize, because it implies that there is seeing and then some kind of reflection. There's seeing and trying to reach back in our minds to look for a connection or a relationship. Maybe sometimes we don't recognize the light because we're not looking. We stay in our own lane and don't pick our heads up and look around. Maybe we're looking very selectively with, with blinders on. We look for the light at church on Sunday morning, but Monday through Saturday, maybe, maybe not. Or maybe, we are sometimes surrounded by so much darkness 
we forget that there is a light to look for. I think in Alaska, there is a particular appreciation for the experience of being surrounded by darkness and to feel like winter never ends. Which brings us to the third thing we need to know. We need to know that the word became flesh and dwelt among us and makes us new. Out of love, the Son of God came down to a world that didn't always recognize him. Out of love, the Son of God extends grace to us, the people he has known since the beginning. Out of love, we are remade as children of God through faith. Out of love, that relationship that has been since the beginning is rekindled. The story of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, makes absolutely no sense unless we know that we are so loved that Christ became human to share love. We cannot buy or earn this love. It is given to us freely. All that we can do and what we are called to do is to accept this gift and to remember it and to share it. This is the good news of Christmas. At the beginning of my sermon, I read a few lines from the beginning of A Christmas Carol. I'd like to return to A Christmas Carol and skip to the end. Scrooge changes, or perhaps we could say is reborn, remade, after his encounter with the ghosts of Jacob Marley, Christmas past, Christmas present, and Christmas future. He gives generously, he laughs, he builds relationships with people instead of pushing them away. Dickens writes, and it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us and all of us. This is, as I mentioned earlier, the second Sunday of the Christmas season and the first Sunday of a new year. It's a time to reflect on the past year and anticipate what might be in store the upcoming year, and maybe the things we want to be in store for the upcoming year. And while the events of the last three years or so have illustrated that sometimes there is frustratingly little we can do, there are some things we can do. We can remember that we are loved and we can love others. We can look for the light and we can be the light. We can feed our neighbors and make sure that everyone has warm socks and a place to sleep. We can remember and live out the good news of Christmas, that the Son of God, who was in the beginning, became flesh and lived among us and makes us new. Wait, may we in this new year keep Christmas the whole year long.
we come to our time of the Holy Communion, uh, are there joys or concerns that we want to raise? As is our custom, we raise a joy or celebration or thanksgiving or concern, and then we would say, Lord, in your mercy, and the congregation would respond with, hear our prayer. Here's a thanksgiving for a brand new year, and what better way to, to begin the year than to be worshiping here together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We move to our great thanksgiving. You'll find the responses in your bulletin. And as we prepare, if you didn't pick up one of the little convenient packets, now would be a good time to, to, um, to slip back and pick one of those up in the <coughs> entry. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth light on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so, with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room. So Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born, so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of woman on that night so long ago, in which Jesus gave up himself up for us. He took the bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. As often as you eat this, eat this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, and he again gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink ye all of this. This is the cup of the new covenant. My blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, 
now and forever. Amen. And it is as children of Jesus that we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. I would invite you, as you are able, to take the bread and to either dip it into the juice or to drink the juice. And to remember that this is the body of Christ, which is broken for you and for me. Take it and know that you are a loved child of God. And remember that this is the blood of Christ. Pour it out for you and for us all, for the forgiveness of sins. Drink and remember his love for you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to be uh, singing a couple of uh, carols here. Uh, the second Sunday of Christmas, it's fun to sing a few Christmas carols uh, before we move to the season of Epiphany. So, uh, Julie, if you want to come up and help lead us, and we're going to sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Um, you'll find the words in your bulletin, and then a couple of verses of Love Came Down at Christmas.